Hello, let's look at To Kill a Mockingbird, Chapter 27. And in this, we kind of go over three things, and then two more things, and then get going. Um, so, it's more than three things. Let's look at this. We start off with Bobby Well, and we find out that he got a job, right? Here's a person who's always depended on the government checks and doesn't work, hunts out of season, all this stuff. And because of his fame, he decides to get a job. And it turns out he got a job at the WPA, the Works Pro Progress Administration. And this was set up during the Great Depression to give work to people. And really, they didn't do a lot, right? Swept roads, hung out. It was known for being really kind of a, just a hangout where people worked and didn't do anything. But sometimes we had highways built, we had dams built. There was a lot of good stuff going on. But in some parts of the country, there just wasn't anything to do. So they just sat around and got paid. Anyway, this is Bobby Wells' job. And he was fired because he was too lazy. So he's the only person in the history of the Depression to be fired from the WPA for being too lazy. And of course he blames Atticus. He says Atticus got his job. So he still blames Atticus for things that he does. Um, and Atticus, well, if Bob wants to talk to me about it, he knows where my office is, just kind of downplaying any gossip and stuff that came out of this. Blowing off Bobby Well. And then we go to Judge Taylor. And Judge Taylor is sitting home reading something by a different Mr. Taylor. Um, on a Sunday night while his wife is at church. And as he's reading, he heard a noise. And it wasn't Ann Taylor, his dog. What a funny name. So he went to take his dog, Ann, out and noticed that the screen door was open when someone was trying to break in to his house and had cut the screen door open, actually. And as he was taking his dog out, he saw the shadow of a man. We don't know who it was. Later on, there's speculation that it was Bob Ewell. And Atticus defends him and says, we don't have any proof that it was Bob Ewell. Thinking like a lawyer. But when his wife got home, when Judge Taylor's wife got home, she found him sitting in his rocking chair, reading with a shotgun across his lap. So he's protecting himself from some intruder. He thought it prudent to have some sort of defense. And then we get to Helen Robinson. And she was hired by Link D's, right? Now, Link did not have work for her specifically. She couldn't do job. She could not do Tom's job. But Link D's hired her so that she could give a wage. He wanted to help her out. So I like this Link D's guy. He's helping out Helen quite a bit. And he found out that she was coming. And what she was doing, she was walking at least a mile out of the way to avoid the Ewell house because they chunked at her. Whatever chunking is, I don't know. Threatened her, threw things at her, scared her. Whatever it was, it was some type of intimidation and borderline assault. So she walked around to avoid it. Linkties walked her home that night and on the way back, stopped at the Ewells. They didn't come out to talk to him. They were scared of him. He yelled at him. I know you're lying down inside. You can hear every word I say. And he threatened him, right? Do not bother her again. So next day, Helen walks back to the house to take a shorter route to work. And as she does, Bobby Will follows her from a certain distance, always keeping back, never getting too close to her. But he curses at her. I think the book said crooned obscenities or something like that. Crooning is a type of singing. So it's deliberate and it's a form of intimidation and he shouldn't be doing this. And when Linkties heard about this, went to Bobby Ewell, threatened him again, right? Threatened him with the lady's law, meaning you can't curse in the hearing of a lady. This is the second time in the novel we've heard this. So um, Bobby will never bother her after this. Apparently he thought Link D's was going to have him thrown in jail for cursing at the ladies. These three things has Aunt Alexandria worried, right? Bobby Will does these three things 
and Aunt Alexander is worried. Um, she doesn't understand why Ewell's holding a grudge. Why is Bobby Ewell holding this grudge? And Atticus just kind of blows it off. He's blowing off steam and it'll go away soon enough. And Atticus says, Maycomb County knows that he and Mayall lied. Okay, and so he's just trying to get back some of that credibility, which he never had in the first place. Atticus goes to say, Bobby, well, we'll settle down when the weather changes. Which, it's fall now, so when it gets colder, like November, maybe he will change. Um, Atticus goes on to talk about Bobby well a little bit on how he's holding these grudges because Judge Taylor made him look like a fool. Judge Taylor would always look at him like, it's a three-legged chicken, or are you for real? Um, not doing anything wrong, per se, but these kind of looks can sway a jury, and Judge Taylor was doing this. Of course, Bobby Ewell doesn't like it. Things kind of got back to normal, according to Scout. And back to normal, and Alexander is still in charge of the missionary circle. And things haven't gotten as bad as that first time we read about it, when Scout was all dressed up, and we had the racist incidents, and we found out about Tom's death. Um, we all found the National Recovery Act was dead. Nice little illusion, the NRA. I thought it funny. Scout asked, well, who killed it? And Atticus said, well, nine old men, meaning the Supreme Court, right? It was one of those things that was found unconstitutional, so it could not help during the Depression. And Halloween changed. We had a very fun prank played on Tootie and Fruity. And be it's nicknames the kids have, of course. And this prank is awesome. And the sheriff gets involved and they find out what happened and they had the bloodhounds out tracking. Of course, all the kids wore shoes so they wouldn't be tracked. And it was really kind of, kind of fun. But as a result, some of the school teachers decided that we're gonna have an organized Halloween this year. And we're not gonna let it be a free for all this time. So they decided to have a Halloween pageant. This Halloween pageant is kind of interesting. There are activities for everything, bobbing for apples, taffy pulling, pin the tail on the donkey for adults and children. Um, I think in the next chapter we'll see some more of these fun little excitements. Um, and we have a play that's going to be performed and it was written by one of Scout's teachers and it's going to be a pageant where the teacher reads and sings about Maycomb County and people are going to come out in costume on their cue and it's going to be a lot of fun. And the play is called, or the pageant play is called Maycomb County Ad Astra Perespera. It's Latin. First student in each class that tells me what this means might get a bonus point. Um, there is an activity for a quarter to the best homemade costume. And we find out Scout has to have a costume because she has a role in the pageant. She's playing the part of a ham. Um, and she's supposed to come on stage when pork is yelled. So we have this ham that's made out of chicken wire and cloth and paint and it's kind of iridescent. We'll get to that later. And Scout's thinking Atticus is going to take her, but Atticus doesn't want to go to the pageant. He's like, no, he just got back from a long week up at the Capitol, and he doesn't want to go. That's his excuse. But Jem will take you if you, he, if you ask him, is what he tells Scout. Um, Scout practiced the pageant, her role. Somebody would yell pork, and then Scout would come into the room. Everybody thought she was great. She did it again for Calpurnia. She wanted to go across the street to do it for Miss Marty. And Jem's like, well, Miss Marty be at the pageant. She'll see it actually there. So Jem takes Scout to the pageant. And then the chapter ends with a sentence of foreboding. Thus began our longest journey together. You know the journey from home to school is three blocks. A lot happens in this next chapter. And... We'll go over it later. So that's this chapter setting up the next one. Have a great day.